What's up folks, this is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help. In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean the mass airflow sensor on a naturally aspirated, non-turbocharged Ford Duratec 3.5 liter. Now the vehicle featured in this video is an 07 Ford Edge. However, the naturally aspirated Ford Duratec 3.5 liter has been used in many Ford models beginning in about 07 all the way up to about 2019-ish. Some vehicles that have carried this power plant include the Ford Edge, the Ford Taurus, Mercury Sable, Ford Fusion, Ford Explorer, Ford Flex, Lincoln MKZ, just to name a few. So if you have one of these vehicles and your setup is similar to the setup shown in this video, then this information will apply. Once I'm done going over how to clean the mass airflow sensor, I'll go over why it's important to clean the mass airflow sensor, and I'll also go over some things you can do to help keep your sensor clean between cleanings. Okay, let's get into it. So there are a few things that you're gonna need. Definitely, you're gonna need some mass airflow sensor cleaner. You can only use mass airflow sensor cleaner in this process. You can't use brake clean or carburetor cleaner or any kind of other cleaner that you might think of, just mass airflow sensor cleaner. Also, I found it helpful to use a little bit of electronics duster, a little canned air here for like cleaning up computers, keyboards, circuit boards, things like that. Super helpful in cleaning the area up and also in the drying process as well. You're also gonna need a T20 Torx driver. You can also use a socket for this, but it's a star head. They also call this a Torx bit or Torx driver. Um, you'll need this to remove the screws that hold the mass airflow sensor in. And then a few napkins or paper towels, you'll need that as well. So the mass airflow sensor lives right here in between the air filter box and the throttle body back here. This is the typical location for it. Before we go to take this out, we're going to use our compressed air or electronics cleaner and kind of blow the area off really well and get any dirt and debris away from this area that we're going to be working in. Just kind of clean the whole area really well. Once you got that done, you want to go ahead and disconnect the electrical connector. You have a locking mechanism up underneath that has to be pulled out and released and then you push in on the release tab or the locking tab and pull back on the connector like so and disconnect it then you're going to take your t20 torx driver and we're going to go ahead and remove these screws that hold the sensor in place them in a safe place once they're out and then remove your mass airflow sensor Okay, now that we have our sensor out, we can go about cleaning it. Go ahead and place your paper towels up underneath where you're gonna be cleaning it at. And this is what we're gonna be cleaning. You see up inside there? Those are the things we're gonna be cleaning out. This is what's called a hot wire mass airflow sensor. And we're gonna take our mass airflow sensor cleaner and we're gonna generously spray inside there on those wires and electronics. And also spray in this area too. Spray it out several times. Now when you're doing this, you want to be careful. You don't want to touch those parts inside there. Keep the, th keep the straw away from them. You don't want to damage them. You just want to spray the fluid inside there. Just like that. Now, I found that using your compressed gas kind of helps in the drying process. Now, the mass airflow sensor cleaner is going to dry on its own really quickly anyway. You can see it's, it's pretty well dry inside there. But just to ensure it's good and dry, I'm going to spray it out some more with some compressed gas. You're just going to gently do this. You're not going to go full throttle on this or anything. Okay, folks, I'm going to break in right here and just give you a little caveat. Whenever you're spraying this mass airflow sensor out with the cleaner or the compressed air or gas, kind of start out far away from the sensor and then work up to it and only spray it lightly. If you go full throttle and press that trigger down all the way, that mass airflow sensor cleaner and the compressed gas can come out quite forcibly and you don't want to go full bore with it. Kind of lightly spray out the mass airflow sensor. And you got to make sure that the compressed gas that you're using is for electronics, okay? Now once you got that done, just go ahead and let it sit. Let it dry for about 30 minutes or so. 
All right, once the sensor has been sitting and drying for about 30 minutes, you can go ahead and reinstall it. But before you do that, go ahead and just wipe this area really clean. You don't want to accidentally get your nice and clean mass airflow sensor dirty again. So clean up that area really well. And you'll notice you can only put this in one way for it to work right. There's a flow indicator right here on the face of the sensor. So the flow, of course, is the way that the air flows. It goes in through the air filter and then through the tube to the throttle body. So the air is going to flow this way, so you want to have the arrow pointing in the direction of the air flow. So we're going to install it this way. That way it catches the air going into it. Go ahead and start your screws. Start them by hand. Take your Torx driver and run them down all the way. Now, these don't require a whole lot of torque. I do not know what the specification is on these, but I'd say just snug and lightly snug, actually. Once you have them snug down and the sensor's in, you can go ahead and reconnect the electrical connector. But before you connect your electrical connector, go ahead and use your compressed gas and spray the inside of the sensor out where it connects and spray your connector out. Make sure that's good and clean. Now, it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of dielectric grease right there, just a small amount over where the, uh, the pins are inside there, and then reconnect the sensor. Make sure it snaps into place. Give it a tug, make sure it's in there, it's locked in, and then push in your locking mechanism. That way you know it's not gonna come out. Give it a tug, make sure it's in there, good. Now, why is it beneficial to clean the mass airflow sensor from time to time? Well, as you probably are already aware of, the mass airflow sensor senses the amount of air flowing into the engine. The sensor sends a signal to the PCM, letting the PCM know how much air is flowing into the engine. This helps the PCM control the air fuel mixture. By knowing how much air is flowing into the engine, the PCM can correctly calculate how much fuel to add to that air. When the inside of the sensor becomes dirty, it becomes not so sensitive anymore. It's kind of dulled, if you will. When the sensor is dirty, it usually will indicate that there's a lesser amount of air entering into the engine than there really is. This causes several issues, including poor performance and overall poor drivability. It can also cause a myriad of codes to set. P0171 and P0174 are a couple of codes that you may see. Usually, they will appear together as the mass air flow sensor will affect the air fuel ratio on both sides of the engine. Now, there are some things that you can do to help to keep the sensor more clean in between cleanings. One thing you can do is to use an original equipment air filter. I can't tell you how many times I've seen aftermarket air filters that didn't fit properly in the air box that caused a dirty mass airflow sensor. An air filter that does not properly fit allows a bunch of dirty air to bypass the air filter and get into the air intake system, contaminating not only the mass airflow sensor but the rest of the intake system. So using the correct air filter and original equipment air filter will help to prevent that from happening. Also, another thing that you can do whenever changing out the air filter is to make sure that the surrounding area is clear of debris and dirt. You don't want debris and dirt getting inside the air box in the process of replacing the air filter, as this can also be ingested into the intake system, contaminating things. So keep that area nice and clean, and if it's dirty before you replace the air filter, clean it up before you take the air filter box apart. Another thing you can do is to ensure that all the hoses that go to your air induction system are connected correctly, especially the air induction system that is from the air filter box to the throttle body. Loose hose clamps, missing hoses, or disconnected hoses will allow dirty air to enter into the system, thus raising the risk of contaminating the mass airflow sensor and other components inside the air induction system. So ensure that all these things are installed correctly and are tight. Well, that is it, folks. I sincerely hope that this helps somebody. If you have any questions, comment down below there. Also, please read the entire description down below this video before you apply any of this knowledge or attempt to do this. There may be some things I need to clarify, and that's where I do that. Also, please read the entire disclaimer at the very end of it. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe.